So uh, today I got a box uh, delivered from Amazon. Um, one of the two pieces that are supposed to be coming. Another one allegedly should be here tomorrow or the day after. So this specifically is the uh, basket that goes on top of the um, Jeep. And this is uh, 64 inches, if I'm not mistaken, by I believe 39. And you could actually shorten it by uh, this, whatever this is. Uh, all right. First thing first. Um, I'm one of the few people that actually reads instructions. Like that's literally the very first thing that I look at. Uh, no instructions provided with a box. Uh, nothing. Okay, so I'm gonna have to um, figure that out. Um, there's some knobby things. I guess those are uh, to attach and secure. There's some plates. Um, bits and bobs and uh, all of this. Uh, my problem with this is that I hope um, from the bottom of my heart that um, the bracketry could be mounted uh, anywhere on the um, on the basket and not in the places where this extension piece connects to the rest of this. Um, reason being is because I'd like very much to keep my stuff right where it is. Um, I'm not particularly opposed to moving them. I'll move them if I have to. I just prefer not to if I could help it. Uh, but nevertheless, so uh, there's some straps. Um, there's also a mesh net. There's some additional straps. And there's also a giant bag, um, a waterproof bag that goes inside the basket. So I have a similar one that I was going to use for my trip to Moab in Colorado. But at the last moment, things changed and I never got around to using it. However, now I have two of those. So in case I ever need them, I'll have one on the roof and one uh, attached to a hitch. So all of this stuff is going to be uh, staying in their bags as a, I don't intend to use it anytime soon. My goal is to just assemble this and figure out how to make it all work. Well, I'm not particularly thrilled, but um, I got it mostly put together. Um, here's the rest of the stuff. So, um, this comes shipped in a box. And, um, all fine and dandy, with uh, one notable exception, uh, that the darn thing is bent. It took me a good minute to, um, wrestle and wrangle this thing into submission. As you see, this thing is uh, misaligned from the factory. Um, so the way this is put together, uh, that piece over there, and then this piece over here, slide into each other, and then the two of them slide into the nose in the back of the uh, rack, and uh, then there's this. Honestly, I don't know what the intent was. Literally every single cap that came in a box is cracked. So clearly the thing that was supposed to be there is not there. Um, yeah. And the way this was put together is that piece went into that piece and that piece into that piece. So you would expect them to, but whatever, nevertheless. So it looks like the... Uh, mounting hardware kind of goes on top and this little doohickey uh, slides on the bottom uh, underneath you know on the bottom of all of that and then I'm guessing the bracket uh, 
One thing I really don't like is the fact that um, they've included this over here, right? Uh, doesn't inspire a lot of confidence, to be honest, because um, no lock knight, not no nothing. Um, so maybe I need to put some Loctite on the thread. Uh, and the caps that I was talking about, here's here's a cap. Right? So that cap actually goes like there-ish, but uh, literally all but one have broken in the box. So, yeah. Is what it is, I suppose. Now I need to uh, dry fit it into place and see what I could do with it. All right, so uh, this is mostly in. Had to uh, shimmy shift it back and forth to make sure that I could actually clear my uh, roof to fold all the way down. Um, so in case you're wondering, uh, with tool bars, uh, spacing is about seven inches, seven inches. And I'm hoping even the back window, yep, the back window clears as well. So, um, it's hanging out from the back by about yay much. Um, now, I should mention that this rack is not going to be holding tremendous amount of weight. Okay, this is not what it's there for. Um, I would most certainly uh, not recommend something so flimsy in my opinion, for something weight-bearing. And uh, here's a little, um, I guess, FYI. If you notice, because of how it's designed, there's giant gaping holes in there. So you also have to be cognizant of that and weight distribution and everything else. Now, I don't think it's gonna fall apart per se. Um, I'm just not particularly, uh, happy about the fact that there's gaping holes like this um and i'm most certainly not happy about those but there's little um light at the end of the tunnel i'm about to apply some loctite to all of this and another thing i'm doing is uh, most of the screws are actually sticking out so um if it starts getting loose or anything, I could always put like a lock nut in there or something. Um, but I'm definitely putting Loctite on top of every uh, little screw just to kind of solidify it in place. It's not going anywhere per se, but at the same time it has just enough of a wiggle to it. Um, not happy. Oh, and another thing is, as I was tightening things, this rubber plastic grommet thing on the bottom, which is this guy over there, um, shifted in a couple of them. And uh, it doesn't really serve a purpose other than not to scratch this. So I'm gonna leave it as is. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if down the road it actually falls out. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, I suppose. So, um, I did think about putting some lights in here. Um, and it has the real estate to do so as well. But I'm also putting in recovery boards, which is going to be the next clip of me trying to put them on. And also there's going to be kayaks, kayak racks, which I'm hoping will have enough real estate to clamp on to the seven inches over here and over there. Um, Cause there's really no other way to attach them other than to the actual rack somewhere. So, but those should come in a couple of days and we'll figure it out as we go. Um, I'm gonna include those in uh, this video as well. You know, I think it's very fitting that the brand for this uh, roof rack 
uh, basket thing is called markings because really it just makes a mockery of what should in theory constitute a roof rack i don't know if it's coming through in the video <laughs> like talk about quality i mean look at it see how it's bubbling over there so so far it's bubbling misaligned um the clamping mechanism is well just stupid uh but you know what for 100 and what was it 49 bucks i guess i can't complain too much um the thing is as i was reading amazon reviews and all of this stuff uh there's a lot of people complaining about rust issues and and i'm talking about other brands not just this one uh and prices are uh really all over the place um So, in other words, I doubt very seriously that for $169, this is meant to last a long time. But here's what it is. Uh, so, just to get you an idea of how it looks on the Jeep. Um, and as I've already pointed out, the uh, soft topper uh, reclines the entire way uh, without bumping into anything. So, um, the goal is to use it to transport non-heavy but somewhat bulky items on the top uh, using that fancy waterproof thingamajig. Or, uh, one of the reasons why I got this is for the uh, recovery boards, which is uh, what I'm about to do. All right, well, this is not rocket surgery by any stretch of imagination. My goal is to just keep the boards in there. So I had to use, uh, I could have used actual hardware like anybody else, you know, for Odin. But if there's one thing that I know is this is not to be used on a regular basis. Uh, based on my 4,000 miles off-road in Moab and Colorado, I uh, only had to use it once. So, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep an extra set of zip ties, maybe even get a couple more sets, um, and keep it in the truck with a pair of, not these, because those are fancy, but. Um, so, basically, what I've done is I just zip tied uh, the ends on both sides in there, just to get you an idea. So, uh, I got two and two. And there we go. And so, still tons of storage space in there. Tons. Uh, let me climb the ladder. Now, you might be wondering why I'm, uh, instead of just buying two, I actually have four in there. Well, uh, in anticipation of my trip to Moab in Colorado, I had to make sure that I could, quote unquote, self recover my motorhome. And if you followed my pursuits on my vlogs, I have a 200, uh, uh, yeah, I think there's about 200 uh, vlogs from my trip. Well, uh, a few of them were actually when I got myself embarrassingly stuck. Uh, at that particular moment, the running boards would not have helped any. Uh, those of you that have watched that video know what happened. Um, so that's kind of the reason why I bought this uh, in case uh, never know and so with this this is how it looks and uh, as I said there's still tons of storage space now obviously in case I had to deploy my fancy uh, waterproof bag uh, thing um, those would have to go or have to be rearranged. Uh, actually, from what I understand, the bag, the waterproof bag, um, only goes up to like here. And I did think about stacking those things that way. Um, but I don't need that waterproof bag thing on a regular basis. So I want everything to be aerodynamic as much as possible. So if you've noticed, there's the wind 
deflector thing over here and everything here is kind of that way. Um, even with the rack, uh, which by the way whistles in case you're wondering. Uh, not terribly, but it does whistle. If I lower the windows, um, I could hear it whistling. Um, because I listen to music as I drive, I really don't even um, uh, hear it all that much, or at all, actually. But just like I said, uh, zip tied. Um, more than likely, there's going to be some other like minded things here somewhere. I don't know what specifically. Um, but it's going to be outdoors based uh, something that I'm just not afraid to live here in perpetuity kind of deal. All right, so uh, the parts have arrived. Um, late, um, but it seems to be that every single package I ever order nowadays is uh, always late. Um, and the actual packaging is much to be desired. For some odd reason, they decided to individually uh, seal every single nut, bolt, washer, screw, anything. Um, all right, so this is one of the four uh, kayak holders. And uh, my vision, as you might imagine, is to uh, mount this over there. Uh, ran into a problem already. Um, one I did not particularly anticipate, but um, I don't know. I, it's not the end of the world, uh, but I am not entirely happy about it. Um, so let me show you what's happening. So naturally there's the high end and the low end and generally speaking, it's supposed to sit kind of sort of like this, right? And then whatever. Um, here's the problem. While I do have the space, I don't have the space. Um, because of this in the way. So you might say, well, uh, why can't you just uh, spin this around? And when you do that, and this isn't bolted fully yet, so, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, how about that? Um, not happy. Uh, not happy at all. Uh, doing some engineering at the moment. Trying to figure out how to make it uh, fit. I mean, worst case scenario, I could always mount this like there-ish, like so. But as you see, that darn thing is so high up. Uh <laughs> particularly uncomfortable it would be far easier if it was over here but um here's what it is so i'm gonna play with it some and see what the uh what the situation is i mean either way it is getting mounted it's just a question of how all right uh ran into a second issue um the backup option of mounting it over there uh, is no problem. <laughs> the problem is mounting it over here because of this diagonal piece in the way. So, um, yeah. All right. So then what I started doing, um, started looking at the overall construction and the general, uh, idea behind all of this, right? So there's four bolts. And then there's the fifth and sixth bolt, which is going through this contraption like so, okay. And the bottom of um, the bottom bracket that connects this hole and that hole is this, right? So it's supposed to sit somewhat like that. Right, so I was looking at it, looking at it, and I'm like, wait a minute. So that's the only piece that's actually holding this entire thing. 
So in a theoretical sense, if I moved this bolt over here, there, and equivalent bolt there, and took the long bolt and put it through the first hole, in theory, what I could do is actually mount it like so, basically uh, fulfilling the very premise behind this bracket. So, um, oh, and another thing about this is, uh, despite the fact that it's removable, as with this over there, um, I don't particularly have an incentive to remove it per se. If I could mount this and it doesn't get in the way, um, and just by looking at the overall, um, I don't know, like, I don't like it being that high to begin with. You know how, like, whenever you go to a garage or something like that, <sighs> and those parking garages always have, like, a height of seven feet. So, I don't know how high this is over there. Uh, probably more than seven feet as it is. But if it's already seven feet, then I'm not going to be able to uh, get into the parking garage to begin with. So, um, but yes, that's kind of the dilemma there. All right, well, that's basically the vision behind it. Uh, reasoning being is that you could uh, very easily load the kayak on the side don't have to climb anything and given that I can't mount it anywhere else <laughs> look at that I think it does the job right um, I should mention uh, those of you that watch my channel um, I do have a Hobie Pro Angler that I tow on a trailer but I do have other kayaks as well both inflatable and actual uh, rigid and so sometimes i just use those and those and those so depending on the circumstance i'm not particularly happy about having this on my truck at all times um, no maybe i need to take it off uh like have it prepared but keep it off Mm, let me see. You know, when you have all this stuff on your vehicle, it looks cool, right? Um, but whether it serves a purpose and a function, especially if it's not something that you use on a regular basis, uh, doesn't look too horrible, I don't think. Yeah. all right well um i'm uh, too lazy to actually bring out the kayaks and mount them so you're gonna have to do uh use some of your imagination but this should get you an idea of what's happening i mounted uh, all of them same exact way through the third hole um i didn't put any loctite on this uh, yet I need to unscrew them and uh, talking about the bottom portion um, here you can see how it's on both ends which means that I could actually carry two kayaks which is pretty cool in worst case scenario, I guess I could take them off. Um, I'm still, I don't know. Uh, I'm lazy both ways. I'm lazy to take them on, uh, you know, to uh, take them off and I'm lazy to put them back on. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. I think I'm gonna sleep on it since uh, day is coming to an end anyways. But there you have it. Uh, I did look at possibly uh, getting uh, lights in here. Uh, 
they're not necessarily cost prohibitive um, but I don't know if I really need them because I don't want to be spending money on things I will absolutely most definitely probably never use um, that kind of uh, came into play when I was messing about with these okay. um, this bumper came with those lights and those lights uh, there was another bumper that came with uh, cutouts for the fog lights right but uh, as described in previous videos I, I made a decision to buy this one specifically um, I like it I like the way that it looks um, but I'm already finding uh, quality issues with it so I don't know if camera will pick this up or not but uh, I ended up going to uh, Walmart and getting uh, fingernail polish um, reason being is because it's dirt cheap you could buy it for like a dollar on the clearance aisle and so I bought a black one to just because what's happening is uh, it doesn't do anything with the D-rings but when I was towing uh, the tow setup was actually just rubbing I don't know if camera is picking them like see how it's different color over there and over there as well like here See how it's a different color? So basically the mechanism for flat towing it behind uh, the motorhome was rubbing off paint. And I'm like, well, that doesn't uh, sound so good. So that, that's the reason why I bought the uh, cheapo fingernail polish. And uh, the beautiful part about it is uh, when it dries up, you could barely see it standing two feet away from it and uh it does the job sealing it's like acrylic based or something but for a dollar i can't complain um autozone sells those little touch-up thingamajigs but they're like 13 dollars a bottle and i'm a cheap bastard so uh, there's that but nevertheless this as described previously in previous videos is connected to the fog light button in the jeep so technically uh, those lights only come on with a switch and that only comes on if I push the button so technically it's always off right and I'm not particularly happy to wheel at night in the first place because let's be honest uh, those of you that have been out to Colorado and Moab know about those giant cliffs and uh, I most certainly don't want to end up in one so um, I figure if I put lights in here, I'd be far more compelled to try dangerous things and will at night than I really don't want. And uh, there's really no need to spend all that money uh, on things I'll never use. So, uh, but I'm still kicking around the idea. Um, technically, if I bought Aux Beam uh, switch panel, which is I think 160 some odd dollars on Amazon, and I bought uh, aux beam uh, fog lights and actually removed those, put the aux beam fog lights in there and then put like two and two and two so that, plus those two. So that would be like two packages worth. But then I'd have to go through the rigor mortis of taking this off and rewiring and I really don't want to do any of that stuff. Uh, so. But there you have it, uh, project done. Moving on to other things. Um, I may be doing some um, other modifications here. Uh, reason being is this track is perfect for camera mount systems. So in a theoretical sense, if I did the uh, T, which I call it? like either a carriage bolt or something, I could always mount stuff here or mount stuff off to the side. Um, another idea I had um, Oh yes, uh, since I, uh, I'm talking about it uh, I ran into an issue um, Okay, but, but before I get to that, let me um, So when I was filling out my Tacoma 
you can imagine how holding a metal gas can in 110 degree heat in uh, under sweltering sun was a pain in the ass. So it would be really nice to have a thingamajig where I could just put it over here and just gravity feed straight in there. Um, but run into somewhat of an issue. If you remember my Utah and Colorado videos, you know that I didn't have a platform, right? So the back of my pickup truck was filled with uh, eight uh, cans of uh, water, six cans of uh, fuel on the back of this, right? And plus all the other stuff in the back. Well, since I have this, I can't put neither of the gas cans. So I looked at the pricing um, I already have all the cans, right? And as, as I said before, I'm a cheap bastard. I'm, I really don't want to be buying anything else, but at least with water, you could actually buy that aqua tank thing that I could shove in the back underneath the platform, like all the way in the back that inflates and deflates so that I could, you know, bring water, but I'm not going to be able to do anything with the uh, fuel cans unless... I take this table and move it over there. So um, I haven't played with it yet. Um, I really like having all of this as a platform, but this exact thing over here is preventing me from being able to put all of the cans in the back of the pickup truck. So there's that. I've been exploring what my options are uh, and I really don't want to be um, putting gas cans or anything up on top or bumper mounted or anything. Um, I looked at some rotor packs that are you know attached themselves to like hinges over here but people are talking about how hinges are bending so I don't want to deal with that. So uh, that's kind of sort of the uh, next project is to figure out what to do with the gas cans and uh, water situation and uh, maybe some do-it-yourself mechanism to temporarily hold a fuel can over here or something of the sort.